No way. <laughs> Compare and contrast your experience dating Alyssa. <laughs> it's not a bad question for it's us. Not a bad question. Yeah, because you're not in the hot seat. My name is Alyssa Lauren. I am 25 years old and I'm a lifestyle content creator on TikTok. I had met Trey in the fourth grade. It's funny, I actually had a huge crush on him. I know he had changed his fourth grade class, um, so I didn't see him again for another 10 years. If we were nine years old in fourth grade, we were reconnected when we were 19 or 18, 19. So almost a decade later at a, a mutual friend's birthday party. And we started dating not too long after that. I met Alyssa through one of my friends who I haven't seen since um, high school. I met with my friend, you know, in LA. He happened to know Alyssa. He invited us over to his home, you know, come, you know, party, whatever. But that was the start, you know, from a friend. Met another friend, yeah. We're a month in. <laughs> a month and a day. <laughs> I've been tracking. I'm not quite sure. I have a lot of questions to ask them and I'm just very curious to hear their perspective on our relationship, especially in terms of how it ended. Um, yeah. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but excited. Hi, again. Hi. <laughs> how uh, are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Want something to drink? <laughs> sure. I'll take the margarita. Yeah. yeah. I made it myself. Okay. <laughs> what was it like transitioning from your relationship with Alyssa romantically into a more platonic? Um, there was a lot of fear beforehand because we didn't know what it was going to be like. I was more afraid of being at risk of losing my best friend just because there once was a romantic connection and just because it's not there anymore doesn't mean there isn't a human connection. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Don't do that. Alrighty, let's do it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you find beautiful that others don't? Oh, you go first. Wet sand. Why? Because it's, it's the texture's different from dry sand, therefore because it is wet. And it's a lot more so malleable. So do you like, like the kinetic sand stuff? Like have you had kinetic sand? Once? Like on the commercials on TV? Yes. No, because my mom didn't want to pay for those things. Okay. <laughs> so I just wet sand on my own and mush it together. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, bats? I think bats are sick. Black is my favorite bats, color. Bats, so. the, uh, the animal bats? Yeah. Did you always like bats? Uh, just recently. <laughs> okay. Bats. Bats. <laughs> Why don't you ask a question? Okay. What emotion do you feel walking into your childhood home? Oh, God. Um, We're like, which one? <laughs> I know, which one? I moved a lot. Whew. What emotion? I've, I'd probably be afraid. Afraid? I'd probably be afraid. Why? Uh, it just, that's a scary place to be. <laughs> it's a lot of uh, animosity, chaotic sort of thing. Well, which childhood home? Because I know you've had multiple. Take your pick. It don't matter. <laughs> don't matter. Or yours be? I want to say happy because that's where me and my mom had lived prior to her passing away. But I'd feel a mix of happy and sad because 
at one point you had lived there with us too towards the end of it yeah. right you remember virginia yeah yeah um gosh so many things happened there um yeah, I feel like you'd describe it a lot better. Virginia isn't the uh, the state we lived in, it's the street. It was the street. It was yeah. the street, we'd just call it Virginia. It was a facility for the developmentally challenged. Yeah. So our roommates were people with schizophrenia, BPD. Uh, BPD, Down syndrome, things like that, and they became family. part of our family. We did a lot of growing in that house. Yeah. That is the one house I will look back on very fondly. Me too. Even though we didn't have the biggest room, it was jam-packed with people. When I moved into the house, I was living in my car. Yeah. And you thought it was a camping trip. You wanted to live in my car with me. Yeah, I did. Uh, and then... And we did at one point. We it did was at one actually point. And, really fun. And the reason, you know, the reason why I was in my car, it was because I didn't, I didn't feel welcome in my own family's home. And so I thought that was the way to go. And then your mom found out I was living in my car. Um, and uh, when she found out, she didn't hesitate to, um, to let me in the home. Yeah. And I can't. Um, I can't repay you or your mom for something like that at all. That's the one thing that always sticks out is that when I, when we started dating, I thought I was just going to gain a girlfriend. <laughs> okay. What I gained in actuality was another mom, another family, and a home. Mm -hmm. And that, to this day, means the world to me. Yeah. All right, let's ask another question. <laughs> Is it my turn? Yeah, I think okay. the real awesome. Oh, this one's different. This one says T, T for two. T for two on it. Let's see. Um, what is your most terrible memory? Of us? In general. In general? Um, the Sunday scaries. The Sunday scaries. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a great one. Thank you for remembering <laughs> that. Having to go to church knowing that my m mom and her husband at the time every Sunday would fight. Being so accustomed to that as a kid to where when a Sunday fight didn't happen, the kids would kind of be like, oh. This is new. This isn't happening yeah. today. The fear of Saturday night heading into Sunday afternoon being like, what is it going to be today? Uh, are we going to have to pick up glass today? which is kind of a lot to handle at eight years old, seven, eight years old. Uh, but yeah, the Sunday scaries, <laughs> Sunday scaries. Do you have a bad memory? When my mom passed away, yeah. I'd say um, you couldn't be there um, for the funeral because it was in the Philippines, remember? Yeah. I was with a doll, right, in the Philippines, and. I kept telling him, I was like, should I look at the casket? Should I look at the casket? Everybody's been going every day for the wake. And he kept telling me, no, I, I, I don't think you should. And then the very last day when they were finally going to close the casket, everyone was saying their goodbyes. And then the second, you know, everyone was out of the way. Um, the second the guy put his hand on top of it, I ran. I don't think I've ever told you this, right? And I was just weeping. I don't think I've ever cried that hard before in my life. I was on the ground and that was, yeah, that was really tough. Um, I just didn't want them to close it. Yeah, I would say that's my most terrible <laughs> memory. Yeah. But, ooh. All right, one more. You go for it. <laughs> what is something you regret that you failed to do or say in a past relationship? You go first. <laughs> what is something you regret?
The one main thing I regret was not figuring it out sooner when you miscarried. That, that was bad. It was a bad day. At that time, we weren't planning for children no. or anything. Mm -mm. But knowing that we lost one regardless, it stings. And you stayed on the couch the entire day. And Baymax was and there. And our dog was just there. The whole time. He didn't move, he didn't eat. But I remember s vividly seeing you in that much pain. And knowing that that's probably what it is, we were probably miscarrying, was, was tough. I think a lot of the time in the past, my goal with you was to figuratively bubble wrap the entire world. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't bump into anything. I mean, I feel like it worked too. It worked. Because remember we'd always joke around and say we gave each other the childhood that we've never had yeah. in our relationship. Yeah. During that time I failed to see the present moment for what it was. But it wasn't your responsibility at the end of the day. Too. It wasn't, sure. I mean, obviously you know this already, but during the time of our breakup I was battling a really bad substance abuse problem. And I wasn't present, nor did I want to be. I also think it was never your burden to bear or your responsibility. I hope that you can find a little peace after this conversation to know that I don't blame you for anything. You know, I was the one who decided to do the things that I did. And, you know, I tried to get help multiple times and I felt like nothing was working. And, it was me that got to that point, and obviously things are a lot better now, and I'm grateful for that, and I would say if I regret anything, it's that. It's, it's not showing my love and appreciation for you more. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <sighs> Cheers. Cheers, yeah. <laughs>Breakup is really fresh, so. The things that I was battling internally just it got to me at a certain point, and sorry guys, it's just so heavy. I've never said it on camera, so it's a little nerve wracking. So, I basic, oh my God, guys. It's just kind of scary to talk about. Um, I basically couldn't take it anymore. So during my time being single, I had made the decision that I just didn't want to be here. Somewhere along there, I somehow met a doll. That night, I felt extremely comfortable with him, and I essentially shared my whole life story in a matter of hours, and it made me feel incredibly seen. He's been taking a lot better care of himself and has all these opportunities, and it makes me really happy. But I would say it is a little sad that we can't necessarily experience those things with each other anymore. Yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, margarita for you and just tequila for yeah, me. Yeah, tequila on the rocks. Yes. <laughs> it's like the good old days again, huh? Like the first day. The first day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm ready. So perception box question number one. What is your most consistent and greatest fear? Consistent and greatest fear? Yeah. I feel like we spoke about your biggest fear already happening, so you might have a new oh, sound. You're right. Fear. Maybe that's why I've been a little fearless lately. Yeah. I think my consistent and greatest fear was my mom mm. passing away. If I were to have gratitude for anything in this situation, it's that, unfortunately, my biggest fear already happened, right? So in a weird way, there's 
nothing left to fear and you can kind of live life without this lingering feeling of yeah. something bad happening anymore. And the turning point, like seeing it firsthand, like living with you and just seeing the day to day, how you changed as a person really it was rough. took a toll on both of us heavily, I, I would know. say. Your whole perception on life, your whole, your light, your aura, everything got it's taken gone. away. Um, you were really there for my family and I, and even in the Philippines, you were so proactive in helping them with planning things and, and just making sure everyone was okay. And even the whole week of the hospital too, I remember you even, despite um, differences that you've had with Trey in the past, you were so considerate in acknowledging that my mom did look at him as a second son. Yeah. I think the first person that you called was Trey, right? To mm -hmm. help him I, understand what was going on. Yeah, because like you mentioned, you know, I can see how a five year relationship, just with anybody, you become really close with someone, regardless of it was your mother in law, your sister, cousin, a friend you met at, you know, at an event, whatever. I saw that relationship and I was inspired almost. I wasn't like, oh, that's like, what is this? You know, I was like inspired. That was pretty cool. I feel like you've changed as a person so much. Because I remember, I think the first day we met, you brought this up. <laughs> you were like, I would never be friends with an ex. You're like, I just don't do that. I'm a traditional man. I don't. It's so disrespectful. <laughs> and I remember telling you, well, I'm pretty close friends with my ex. And you're like, what? Yeah. And I think for a while, you carried that mindset, which I respected. But it's case by case scenario. You know, everybody has different synergies within their relationships. Someone might agree, someone might disagree. It only works if both people are on the same page, mm -hmm. you know? All right, you pick one now. <laughs> I pick one? Okay. Because we... What need inside yourself have you been neglecting? Ooh. During our time in our relationship, which was no fault of your own, arguably we can both say this, we were both very invested in that goal that we had, yeah. right? It was getting clean. Remember we had the yes. little whiteboard on, and it was like this many days sober and mm -hmm. we'd check it off. Yes, <laughs> it was a good journey. It was definitely a good journey. Not one I want to... Not a journey I want to cross ever again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> basically, had to lock you. You basically had to lock me in the house. Um, <laughs> during the process of me getting clean, I was just so afraid of potentially relapsing. So I just shielded myself from friends and from people. And I was afraid to make new ones. One thing that's a part of my reset routine and something that fuels me and motivates me as a person and keeps me healthy is human connection. Mine is almost completely the opposite to is yours, okay. where I feel like I, let me read this once more. <laughs> I needed for a while, a long time, I needed to just not neglect myself. It's just hard to even put it into words because you needed more people, I needed less, less people. Less people. <laughs> I needed my time, as you know, um, thrive. You're very much a homebody. Um, yeah. yeah, I thrive in my, in my own thoughts. I thrive, you know, taking it in, conceptualizing within myself. You know, I feel like we have it switched. You know, you like to outsource and then go within. Yeah. I like to go within and then outsource. I wouldn't say it was uh, a regretful thing that happened. Yeah. I need to have my own, like, weekly yeah. thing and you know with my ADHD and stuff like too like I used, I used to be getting distracted I can't I mean, you get distracted you just can't you do. Do, you know but yeah do you want to read it or should I you can go ahead okay when was the last time you really cried I think we both know the answer to this one hmm. the night that I left which one <laughs> which one <laughs> Um, the recent one. <laughs> the recent one. Oh. Yes. I want to let you know I appreciate this a lot, by the way, because remember my car was broken down. So, obviously, despite us not being together, you took really great care of me that day. So, thank you, because mm -hmm. I don't know much about um, taking it to the service center and you drove me, you talked to the AAA, you 
spoke to everyone so I could just show up and vibe. And mm. then I remember we had per gotten usual. food. Huh? Per usual. Per usual. And I remember when we went to your room so I can gather the rest of my books and clothes and boxes and whatnot. The second you sat on the bed and I sat on the bed, it was just... Yeah. The floodgates just <laughs> came out and... You really did save me and I think I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Um, given the path that I was heading towards and I think I just met you at the right time and you had no obligation to help me, but you did. Had I not met you, I would not be doing this interview or podcast or conversation with you. Um, as much as you say you saved my life, I don't think you have an idea um, how damn bad I was when you met me. I saw you and I was like, this person deserves happiness. I couldn't meet you, hear your story, connect on so many things, and just say, all right, it was fun, I'm out, figure it out. You know? Hey, friends. <laughs> Trade. So Alrighty. <laughs> How are we? This is interesting. Can you hand it to me? Okay. Challenge card. Alyssa, please stay silent while Trey and Adal respond to the following. Compare and contrast your experience dating Alyssa. Who was she while you were dating her and how do you think she has changed? It's not a bad question. <laughs> it's not a bad question for it's us. It's not a bad question. Yeah, because you're not in the hot seat. I, well, Are there headphones? Chronological order. Do I have to listen to this? Yes. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, Very bad. It's the same human, but two very different people that we experienced. It's the same stubbornness, but it was different. Kind of taking the candy away from the baby and they cry. Then you have to explain why you took the candy away and you can't have candy at night. It's nighttime, we're going to bed. If I see red, everything's red. Everything at that point is collateral damage. And I don't care. She does not care. She does not exactly. From what I just heard, uh, a lot of things are similar. <laughs> Not a lot, has, a lot has changed, obviously. I relate a lot to the, here's a candy, no more candy for you. <laughs> like, you go to bed, and, you know, it's time for you to hit the hay. Basically, you just don't want to feel anything just because your feelings are so overwhelmed, uh, yeah. which causes wanting candy because you just want to forget about all the pain. Mm -hmm. So that's where the analogy, you and I, like, you and I really clearly get it, but yeah. someone else, like, I got the candy, what are you talking yeah. about? I think that the core of her is the same. Yeah. It, but the, the problems are the way she, she's very implosive to where, um, she, like you said, she doesn't want to deal with the problem at hand, so she's going to try to stimulate elsewhere. Back then, in comparison to when you came along, uh, back then there was an explosiveness and implosiveness about her to where it's sporadic and it's sudden and you got to kind of catch her before she falls. Yeah. Um, but it was contained. Um, as opposed to later on, especially with the, you know, the issues she was dealing with, especially before you came around and mm -hmm. once you were there. I'd say your job was more intense than mine was, right? Because I caught her in a downwards spring to where it was starting to settle. You caught her at the prime of her upward swing where it's starting to get hectic again. Yeah. But the reason why I always commended you for that is because 
you didn't budge. Regardless of your capacity, whatever the case might be, you stood your ground. Putting the pride aside sort of thing for the betterment of somebody else, that's a tougher job than I had to bear. For sure. And I think to this question is a great question, but also as a learning point for people in general. And, and that's what I've said this whole, this whole time. It's, you're in that corner. Like you've yeah. been a friend and nothing more than that. You yeah. know what I mean? Never been weird, never been sus, never, mm -hmm. you know, even when the times that you were, we were all three in the apartment, like if she was, you know, unwell or whatever, you would give her privacy and stuff like that. You know, you were very respectful throughout the whole time. I think you should probably share the story. You uh, hit me up, you were super excited. Yeah. So was I about yeah, the yeah. barber shop. Uh, the guy came in, it was perfect, perfect yeah, timing. Yeah, yeah, like, and I remember, um, so I, I, was, I was cutting hair and then this random guy just kind of sat down and I asked him, I just tried to make small talks just to pass time. I said, what do you do? And he says, well, I, I work for this clinic that helps with um, people who are going through uh, issues, substance issues, uh, domestic violence issues, all these things that coincided with things that we needed. And it was literally out of nowhere. Yeah. And um, I explained um, very vaguely, so I didn't give too much away to this person of our situation with her. Like, we have a friend, she's mm -hmm. going through this, what can we do, she has no insurance right now. And immediately when I found that news, I got home, I called you, you were the first person I called. Mm -hmm. And I sounded happy, and you sounded pretty, yeah. pretty happy about that too. And it was sort of that uh, feeling of, Relief. even though we are two very different people, uh, we had the same intention in mind for somebody we cared about. Yeah. I mean, I think I was already pretty set on my decision prior to coming into the episode, and I don't think much has changed. They were both a beautiful chapter of my life that ended, and I, if anything, if anything did change, it's my appreciation for them. I had thought that I had gotten closure with them already, but this was very transformative for us and all of our relationships moving forward as friends. I've been a lot happier and it, it's, it's not to say um, it's because I broke up with a doll, but I think I've been being really introspective and spending a lot of time with myself and I think this is the happiest and healthiest I've been since I was like 17 years old. Yeah, sure. <laughs> this is a letter to my future daughter. Okay. As I'm crying, preparing to break up with the man who I thought would be your future father, my thoughts surprisingly drift to you. I dream of the stories I'll tell you about me, your mom, in her 20s. I'll tell you about today, the day I lay here, tears staining my pillow as I pondered over what to say to the man that saved your mom's life. He took care of her when she had no one. He protected her from the poison that was killing her and helped her get her life back again. As I readied myself to see him, to give our love one last chance, it was you who flashed through my mind. I thought of the way that I wanted you to see me. I realized the most important legacy I can leave for you was not a tale of being rescued, but one of self-rescue. I hope you learn to see yourself not through the eyes of those you meet in your journey, but through your own, recognizing the beauty and strength you possess. And as you write these pages, know my love, my lessons, and my stories are a part of you, guiding you gently. But in the end, it's your pen, your words, your story, not a man's. Love, Mom.